Okay, now let's set up the second part of this tutorial. We've already set up the flow with inlets and outlets and meshes. Now, what we want to do is to simulate the valve itself. Now we're going to do this several ways we could do it. We do it with a moving mesh. That's what we'll actually do in the uh, um, tutorial that's coming up uh, a couple tutorials from now. But in this case, what we're going to do is to simulate this using variable viscosity. So I'm going to walk you through how we're going to set this up. The, we're, what we're capitalizing here on is anywhere you can type a number, you can type an equation in ComSol. And that can be very nonlinear. So in the flow, the regular flow, viscosity of water is about 0.001. Okay? So if you're not in the gate valve, we're going to leave it as the viscosity is 0.001. If you're in the gate valve, we're going to crank that viscosity way the heck up. We're going to crank it up by a factor of a million. So instead of being 10 to the minus 3, it's going to be 10 to the positive 3. Now, if you're a water molecule and you're trying to go through that, that's going to feel really, really hard to go through. So we're making the valve itself, the gate itself, very, very, very viscous. Now, <laughs> there's two ways to do it. You can just do a simple conditional. Uh, it's very unfriendly to the solver, but sometimes it works. Or better, give it a smooth step function. So <laughs> we're trying to show you the right way to do this, so let's do it a smooth step function. We're going to define a step functions under definitions, and then we'll smooth it and we'll have it rise in one millisecond, pretty fast. Now we're going to use that in defining a variable. Now <laughs> we're going to define three of them. We're going to define Y gate, that's the position of the gate, so that's a, a variable that we've got, uh, percent open, that's a parameter we've got, times the gate travel, uh, plus wherever it is closed. So that's going to say where the bottom of the gate is. Now the unfriendly way to do this is gate viscosity 1, where we just say, look, if uh, Y is lower than uh, Y gate, then just use the viscosity of 0.001. Whereas if it's higher than Y gate, then this evaluates to true, and if it's true, that's 1. So I've got 1 times 1,000, so it comes out at 1,000.001. So it's very, very viscous. That's the unfriendly way. The friendly way, which we're going to do for the solver, is we'll just define it using this step function. So we do uh, the step function on uh, the uh, current position versus uh, where it is. Okay, We'll multiply that by 1,000 and then uh, use that in the viscosity. Um, now, remember we've just defined a viscosity, so what we'll do is we'll add another fluid properties, we'll put in the gate itself, a custom user-defined viscosity, and we'll use that function. So let me go ahead and do that in ComSol. So I'm going to come back, go back to my uh, uh, problem that we've been working on up till now, and then let's add that to ComSol. All right, so... The first thing we need to do is to uh, define that step function, so it's a little bit friendly. So I'm going to go to uh, Definitions, right-click on Definitions, and I will add a function and a step function. Okay, it looks good as the way it is. What I want to do is make sure that it's smooth, and instead of rising in a tenth of a second, I want to rise in a millisecond, 001. Okay, now if I plot this, you can see how this goes. Boom, 0 to 1. Now we're going to use it. So let's come in and again go to definitions. I'll right click and add a variable. Now I could type these in, but uh, and, and so, and so it's a little bit faster. I'm just going to read it in. So I'm going to choose gate valve variables and open that. Okay, now if you look at that, I've got my three functions. Here's Y gate and the one that we're going to use, gate viscosity. Okay, and then if you look at this, I've got uh, this uh, step function that's being used, and Y gate is the uh, current position of the bottom of the gate. So we're all set up to use it. Now, let's use it. Now, let me close up geometry just so it's not confusing. In fact, let me close the whole darn tree up. So I'll collapse the whole tree, open up model so we can see what we're working on. I'll open up laminar flow, and then I've got one fluid property that's using the material um, library values. Let's add another one. Right click add a fluid property. And where do I want to add that? In the gate itself. Right there and right there. Okay, so now it says, oh, what do you want to do for fluid viscosity here? I'm defaulting to the material library. Well, I'd like to do a user defined and I'm going to use what I did in the definition. So if you look at the variables, I used gate viscosity right there. So let me just uh, cut and paste that. Control copy, 
And then I'll go down to my fluid properties and I'll do control V and plot in the gate viscosity. That's it. We have now defined a nonlinear viscosity that is very, very high if you're in the gate itself and regular water if you're below the gate, the bottom of the gate. Now, in the global definitions, we set up a parameter of percent open. This one can run right now for 20% open. So let's run that. Right click on study and hit compute. Now this is exactly the same problem. All we've done is added this extra viscosity, highly nonlinear in this particular valve um, area. And then it is solving, and what it will do is the fluid that is running into the high viscosity can't move through it, so it's going to go where the least resistance is, which is underneath the valve and out through this tube right here. This technique that I'm showing you only works if, if the flow's got somewhere else to go. You can't fully close it. And if you look at it, presto. The gate is 20% open. Remember, there's uh, about 10% uh, or 9% of it is in the seat right here. And uh, lo and behold, the valve is closed, almost closed. Now, what we'd like to do next on this particular problem is to do a parametric run on this. So how do I set up a parametric run on, um, on COMSOL? Well, it, it's very easy. And again, just to show you how uh, without too much complexity here. Let's collapse this entire model tree, same model tree, and then I'll go to study and I'm going to right click on study and add a parametric sweep. And so what do you want to uh, sweep on? Well, I'm going to choose add and it will look in all of my parameters that was defined up in global definitions. Obviously I want a very percent open. And so how would you like to vary that? So I'm going to choose range and I'm going to start at 90 percent open. I'll stop fully closed and now it's going negative. So let's do this at uh, negative 10 steps. Replace that. Now there's two things we need to do here. Okay, One, <laughs> which is nice, I'll just say plot and then I'll put while solving. As it's solving, what it will do is it'll give me the flow as this thing is solving each parameter is going through. Now there's one more thing this particular problem needs. Now, this is very nonlinear. Um, and so by default, the parametric solver does something where it, <laughs> if it, it's running into problems, what it does is it varies it, it, the percent open itself to uh, uh, go in smaller and smaller steps to try to make it a little bit easier to solve. Now in this particular case, that uh, runs into some trouble, so I'm going to turn that off. Too smart for its own good. So I opened the extension and I turned off the parametric solver. That is not actually changing the parametric run. What it's doing is taking off those smarts. I'm all done. Right click on study and hit compute. And then I'm going to let this start just to show you that I haven't made a mistake in any form. All right. So off it goes. All right, and eventually what's going to happen is you're going to see this with the flow going straight through um, and then it will start closing. Now this takes about eight minutes. So I'm, I'm going to bring it to a screeching halt and I'm going to do uh, what you do in those cooking shows where you pull it out of the oven already baked. Yes, I know, I stopped you myself. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab the fully baked one. All right, This is exactly the same problem. And if you notice, it took me 7 minutes and 46 seconds to run this. All right. Now, what this is, is all of the various cases. In fact, what you're looking at right here is 90%, 80%, 70%, 50%, whatever. All right. Now, um, I can go to the velocity, and then I can pick this button, choose a player. Now, again, I've already done that, so I'll choose player right here, and then let me pick play. And what you'll see is this valve working in action, which is pretty cool. All right. Now, the other types of things that we'd like to know about in this problem, well, first of all, I'm looking at how the feeder stream works, and it looks like uh, you've got to get to almost 20% open before it actually gets it into the uh, uh, side thing. The other thing we'd probably want to know is uh, what the flow rate is going out the uh, side. Now, I did this already, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you the uh, steps on it. What I did is I defined an integral, and I did that by doing right-click on definitions, go to a model coupling, and then I choose integration. Okay, I've already done that. 
And then in this particular case, I chose this particular boundary. So this boundary right here is uh, the integral that I want to define. I did another one on the outlet and oh, by the way, another one here. So it integrates anything that I want. Okay, now I'm going to use those integrations to calculate the flow rate going out, the average flow rate going out. So if I uh, uh, do that, I'm going to right click on study, I'll update the solution. When I do that, rather than rerunning it, it evaluates those integrals, which I'm delighted about. And then I use those in a 1D plot. So I right clicked on results, I gave myself a 1D plot, that's right here. I right clicked on 1D plot, I gave myself a global plot, that's right there, there's the global plot, and I asked it to plot the following, those integrals. Okay, so if I look at that integral, here's the one I did the integration on the inlet and the integration on the outlet straight. I said use that integral on, uh, on the U, the velocity, and use that integral on the velocity in, so velocity out over velocity in and plot it. And so here you see the results right here. So if you're at 0% uh, open, um, it zeroes out, or almost zeroes out. Remember I've got uh, a finite viscosity right here. Um, and when it's fully open, it uh, tops out at about 60% going out. All right? So that's, uh, that's what we worked. Okay, now let's review what we did. Um, we did a um, uh, we did the player. Okay, we uh, set this up in Comsol. We first uh, set up the flow problem. So we chose a physics. We uh, imported the geometry sequence and chose some materials. Set the boundary conditions. Meshed it. In this case, cleaned the mesh, cleaned the geometry up a bit, and then solved it. Then I did this nonlinear technique of uh, putting a uh, custom viscosity in to emulate the valve ran that, did a parametric run, and then got what we did.